didn't know. He sounded a little bit gruffy, but that's because he liked me. And I liked him. I loved him. But we're here now in these days of life-threatening times and causing the circumstances like they are with COVID-19. And we're looking at this life-threatening situation worldwide. But it also tells us that our lives, we are also more. And Keith's passing reminds us again how fragile life can be. And not only that, life goes by so fast. But I think the key to living a life is to live that life always in the moment. To live that life always in the moment and know there's something around you, there's something above you, there's something that can be inside of you that's a source of life that's bigger than this life outside of us. Naturally, I'm going to say that type thing because I'm a preacher, but I believe in that because it happens with me. Psalm 30 and 5 says, In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is a big thing with me about living for Jesus. I always will have something to look forward to. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He is talking about a quality of life. He is talking about a life that's fulfilled. Whether you're happy or sad, that's with me, whether I'm happy or sad, this life Jesus gives me excels beyond that because I've always got something besides that or even above that to look forward to. Now I know all of you love Keith and uh, that's for sure. And he loved you. That I know. If I wanted to be talking with him and get him fired up, all I had to do was ask about one of you guys, one of you grandkids, or what was going on. And what I liked about Keith too, he was a big time talker. He's the only person probably on some days could out talk me, because I love to talk. So we, we really have a good time talking about nothing. <laughs> But there was a zest for life with Keith and team together. And I loved it. This zest for life with them together was not only centered around their life in the Lord, but it was around this family. They loved their son and daughter, and they loved their grandkids, they loved their, their in-laws, and they loved their great-grandchildren. They loved their family. Uh, when I was a pastor of Green Valley, back in those days, back in the day, okay, we had a softball team. Tim played on that softball team. And when we started out, we were the worst team in the league. And we started getting good. And we beat Maranatha. The last couple of years we played, we beat them. They were so good, they had two teams. So we we done good. I'm not just telling you that about the softball team. I'm telling you about two guys that played on me and Keith. Now, I'm the pastor. So being a little older, they felt obligated to let me play. But Keith talked to me and let him play. So, even though we were a little slower, reflexes wasn't so good, we had that joy together on that softball team. But you know what? Keith had his own five-star team. It was his five grandsons. And I'm sure he added to that list. And I know you guys well, remember the times you spent at their house. And I was just 
thinking, maybe I shouldn't even mention this when I was coming over here about, I wonder if anybody ever fell off that wall. If you all ever rode a sled over that wall, or if there were any accidents, if you did, I guess you didn't get hurt too bad. But when I went to see them, it was pretty good for me, and I was in shape. You know, to walk and walk up that hill and everything. I often looked over that and wondered, now that's just me. I mean, y'all probably never thought about it. I knew y'all were good boys. Y'all just probably sat around in the yard and read little books and stuff and whatever. <laughs> but Keith and team together lived a life that I describe a life of unworks. They never had a big stage to tell you anything about anything. Never had to tell you about Jesus in their life. They just lived that life. And that life was a life of faithfulness and dedication. And that life was impressive and influential. And the two of them became what I love to see and what I loved to have experienced was the two became one. And that's what a marriage is supposed to be. So when Teen passed away, so much of Keith's life passed away too. I can tell you that. I don't know how he felt. But I know how I felt when my wife passed away. And I, I told people then, I tell people even now, I lost my me. The best part of me that you see is what she made of me. And I know that's what team was to Keith. So soft-spoken, so sweet. Keith was just, you know, not so soft-spoken, and sweet sometimes. But what a couple, what a pair. And so I wonder, I just wonder now, knowing Keith has passed, we know that that has happened and we hated that that has happened, but we're glad we know where he went. We're glad that we know that promise that was given to us when we come to know Jesus holds true now. He went to paradise, a place of painless bliss. Maybe once again, he's walking along, holding the hand of his sweetheart, Tim. I serve Jesus because, because I always have faith expectation of something that's going to happen. It may not happen in a big noticeable way, but I see Jesus all the time working in people's lives. I do a lot of hospital visitation, I see Tim there a lot, and uh, I've seen the Lord do so many good things for people to be made well who've been sick. But Jesus is something good to look forward to. And I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus, but I don't want God to warm up the bus. I'll be glad to get there when I get there. And Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. Not only did I rise from the dead, Jesus said, but I am the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus made this request in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying the night before he was crucified. He said, Father, I ask you that those you've given me will be with me where I am, that I can, that they may behold my glory. I ask you that they would be with me where I am. And so that's the promise we hold. That's the promise Keith held on to and now is experiencing. And just in closing, I had this thought. 
maybe one day later on in heaven, I'll be walking along somewhere and I'll hear this voice of Keith Love to call me preacher. And when we were playing in a softball game, he would always come over around the backstop and say, Preacher, we need a hit now. Preacher, you got two strikes. And I'm already nervous enough for putting that pressure on me. You know, Preacher, we expect you to hit the ball, whatever. This is a thought that came to me. Maybe I'll be walking along and I'll hear this voice that's only his. Preacher, you hit a home run. You made it. That will sound real good. That's what we're looking forward to. That's a life after life. That's a life that goes on living. And that's when God finishes our story. Our story may be finished here on earth, but God's the one who puts the final ending on our story. You say, well, how, how does that story end with Keith? It ain't ended yet. He's still in the hands of God. Great, the great writer. I want to quote you words from the poem as I close. And uh, this poem was just a verse or part of a verse of a song that was in the pocket of Krista McAuliffe, who died in the Space Shuttle Challenger back in 1986, long before probably most of you all would ever known about. But she had this poem in her pocket. Actually came from a song. And it, it, it's so good. It's such, a, it's such a different take on what the resurrection is. Here's what the song says. Move over, sun, and give me some sky. I've got some wings, and I'm ready to fly. I may be unknown, but wait till I've flown. You're going to hear from me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that we can celebrate this life. Keith, we can celebrate the Lord here today, even though the circumstances are not so as we might want them. We're still, we're still, Lord, able to speak and we're still able to share. And we thank you. I pray for this family. I pray that you will comfort them. Not just today, but in the days coming, Lord, and you'll be with them. I pray you'll hold them close to your heart. And I pray, Lord, you would speak to them that there is a life. There is a life that is a better life. And I pray, Lord, you would comfort them and just take care of the needs, Lord, that they might have. I know when we lose someone, it is such a strange thing especially at first, and we kind of uh, work our way through it. But I know you said there's no place we will go that you're not already there. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for knowing King Reed and to be a part of this family. In your name we pray. Amen. And that's my committal. And my last word is see you later, Keith. Or there is no problem with your body. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Pam. Yes. Bless you. Anybody else want to talk with me? Um, I not necessarily. You all just go ahead and finish up, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks. I Love appreciate it. Love you all. Bye. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Is she off? I'm just seeing myself. Ha, 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 ha.